Hello, Internet. My name is Joshua, and I'm going to teach you how to code with Java and Kotlin on this question. How to check palindrome. Oh, sorry. <laughs> how to check if the string is a palindrome. Um, and this is a question from Code Signal. I'll send you the URL um, if you want to solve this question by yourself. But if you want to look at the answers and get your homework solved right away, I'll show you how. So here's some examples. That's Yep, that's a palindrome, okay. So it's more like a true and false. Oh yes, you can tell that from the return type of the function. It's a Boolean, true or false. And the input is an input string, okay. All right, that's, that makes sense. Okay, now why would you want to know about checking if a string is a palindrome? Well, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this movie. Um, the Arrival, um, what happens is what happens if there's aliens that has some sort of weird alphabet that comes in the shape of circles and for some reason it has some sort of palindrome significance that you are trying to understand why this is happening like what does this language mean like um to teach us that life goes around and around or something like that or time for the beginning is the same as the end and the end you can't change the beginning some sort of weird circle game i can never understand some sort of mind foolery that aliens might throw at you or they could be just different aliens and you might think that it's a palindrome but really you're gonna get necked for that so in that case let's find a way to make sure we won't get in trouble with aliens all right so <laughs> i'm just fooling around guys <laughs> so what should see the inputs is a string not just a string it's an input string all right, and we would return the output if it's a palindrome. I mean, it's a palindrome, and that's a boolean. Again, boolean means true or false. I might make a short video, I mean, instruction, instruction, a tutorial video about all this stuff in Java in the description below in the future. But right now, I just want to, uh, I'll just do go over some questions that you might in your homeworks and then I'll try to help you guys out all right so how do we solve this now if you guys are new to Java one crazy 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 idea you might think is to <clears throat> you know say like I want to create a you know declare a variable called reversed and you know this you know initialize it with no values yet but you go through each value of input string oh my gosh no we can't do it that way because that's already a string let's just say you want to make it a car array you can do some sort of complex hard way to solve this one ah I don't know what you guys are doing but you know some of you might think of some complex way of solving this question oh here I have a better idea hmm yeah, I remember now you guys might do something crazy like this is what I did when I was a kid I'll just show you and s equals zero. I'll show you the faster way too. I promise. I'm just gonna go through what some of you guys might be thinking. And int s equals zero, and the s should be it goes onto the length of the string. I don't recommend this, guys. Cause see, look, look, it's already chaotic. I I even forgot how to do this. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Wait, return reverse. No, no, return does input string dot equals. Um, the reason why I use dot equals instead of you know this equals equals value is because um, equals equals compares the reference to the other value you can do something like this watch that is not acceptable if you're not comparing a primitive value strings um they're objects so you have to compare the contents of that one like this now if it were like you know primitive values like integers and longs and floats that's fine but here you can't do that okay so here I'm going through the whole reversed I'm going through here and I'll build the I'm going to build this value by adding it backwards so in that case I won't even start on s equals zero I'll start on this one and go backwards remember um, when you index a value um, in Java, it goes like from zero, and then one, and then two. That's why I started with minus one because, you know, if it's a three-string value, it'll be zero, one, two. Okay, and keep going, and it should not. It should end at zero. 
should be greater than should be less than or equal to zero. Sorry. <laughs> should be greater than or equal to zero. That's a constraint. This is where it ends. And then it subtracts values each time plus equals and let's see. Oh here, make this much more readable. Position. Position. So we can understand what this uh, what this value is for when you iterate. Let's hope my memory is still good, guys. Here, uh huh. So you want to run the tests? Huh? How do you index a string again? Ah, <sighs> index string Java. Sometimes, oh wow, there's an index of G. No, no, not, that's not what I wanted. Well, here, this is all on purpose. If you want to find out how to um, get methods off, because C string is an object, you could, you know, it could call up several different methods. They go along with it. I'm just gonna pretend that that was part of my plan. <laughs> All right, here, returns the index within the string. Okay, so if we don't want to return index, we return the value based on that index value. So let's see if we can find that one. Is there a dot get here, or is there not? Well, we can use this substring, but that'll be kind of annoying. Well, I think that's what I could find at the moment, and I don't want to use up too much of your time, guys. So what the substring does is that it returns a subsection of that string. So when you turn the subsection, well, sometimes in your IDE you could um, find um, find what sort of methods are going with that object that you're using, the substring position. And then it's not inclusive to the end value, so it's position plus one. And you run your tests. Badoom! All according to plan. But this is looked down upon because look at what all this work. We're adding a for loop. We're adding um, a string reverse. We're creating an unnecessary... Um, which is all this... All this complication to such a simple question. Just check if it's a palindrome. Another way we can do this is using a string builder. Now, string builders are um, they allow you to do some fancy functionality, such as like um, again, like check if the string is reversed, or it's like it's more faster to use when you put with your applications. Like instead of like you know adding this concatenation like this, it actually slows down. It's slower to actually use this one than the string builder. It's much more fast way of doing this. So string builder is like this. SB equals let's just see um new string builder. And you can initialize it with that string like this. And then you can simply just return SB dot reversed. No sorry. Yeah, reversed. No here. It says input string dot reversed. Does it equal sb dot reversed dot to string look how fast this could run let's see if I did that right it's my memory is still jogging I've done this like three months ago so cut me some slack ah okay how do you use string builder okay well this is a good time to go over the documentation when in doubt always use um, the Java application use your friend Bing or Google or wherever you would like to use Let's see here. Use the reverse. Oh, it's just reverse. Why is it suggesting me some different? <sighs> Don't do this to me, code signal. You've been so fine so far. Huh. What? Whoa. Who's here, buddy? Ah, oh, I see. I'm sorry. This is dot equals. This is dot reverse. Dang. You know, I'm doing this impromptu, so that's why you're seeing me at raw trying to solve how to do this question. Oh, I should go over more of my thought process. One, I should just indicate, like, you know, if you're doing a hard problem, always, like, write out what are the steps, how you would solve it. Um, I know some teachers or professors would be lenient to you if you could include what your thought process is in your code. Like, for example, I want to say, um, I want to initialize, 
um, I'm gonna initialize a variable with something 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 let's just say I want to create create a variable to store the reverse value that's a better way to put it but um and uh, yep yeah. and then you might say like you know then I'll iterate with the for loop to create string or in this case right here which is much better use a string builder and it's um, the objects function with its functionality to reverse strings and there you go and then the teacher might say like you know what he's kind of right I know he doesn't know how to do it um, and write it on paper but um, he has the right idea and I'll keep him partial points for that one um, some interviewers might be kind of lenient too but I recommend you actually study up for that stuff Oh, I think this one could be shortened down even more, guys. And if there's an opportunity to shorten it down even more, like maybe we could remove the reference to um, to create a variable. Because if you could do that, it can make the code even run even faster. So let me see if I can do that one. Um, the trade backs of doing something like this for, even though this is a simple problem, it might be a little tricky for a new person who reads this one to understand what's going on. It, so it might be less readable, but um. Here's what you can do. Let's see if this works. I put string dot equals new string builder. Input string. Now dot reverse. Let's see if this works. If it doesn't, I think this the above solution is better. Let's see if I can recall this correctly. All right. If this works, guys, I'll be so amazed. <clears throat> Oh my god. Guys, we found a way to make this a one-line solution. Hot diggity dang. <laughs> Alright, so again, now, some people who might read this might be confused. Sometimes I try to try to do something like this. Oh, actually, don't do that. Let's do it like this to make it readable. Um, and um, include some documentation comments. Um, documentation comments are similar to... To... Um, multi-line comments except that you know some Java tools can recognize that there's some sort of a that this is some sort of method that um, we need to record in some external documentation like a Java doc tool so I can say this this function returns palindrome and then you know I could just tell the goal so that you know if you look at this you'll be like I don't even know what's going on you can probably include like what happens string builder has functionality to reverse strings so that if someone asks why you use it, then you can you can understand why um, at inputs, at turn values. I think you get the idea of what to do. Just include those values here, dot, 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 and stuff like that. Now, I promise I'll do this in Kotlin. All right. Now, how would I solve this with Kotlin? Oh, yes. I remember now. Kotlin, my goodness. And you could tell that, you know, Kotlin is much more amazing than Java. I know. I love Java before, but I think Kotlin is is being a cool rival. You could actually solve this, um, I think, in one line, actually, without a string builder, too. Um, one thing about Kotlin is that strings has the ability to reverse right away, actually. I mean, let me see if I could tell you what it means. Dot equals. Huh. Please don't, don't embarrass me. Okay, some Kotlin might have the code. I mean, might have documentation. How does what what the string methods can do? Let's see if this works. If not, I might have to pull in my sheet of what notes I did before how to solve this. Or I could just solve this with you guys. Let's see. Oh my God! Yeah. So okay, uh, let me see if we could pull up some documentation right in front of you. String Kotlin. So one thing about String Kotlin is that it might have some. It has all these functions that go along with it that you can. It's diff, slightly different than um, than Java. In that it could actually has more um, flexibility. Like you could return a, a verse um, string with characters and stuff like that. Um, so again, um, to to have good answers like this, the advantage favors those who read. The documentation notes but if you don't know about this then you can do the old-fashioned way just iterate <coughs> excuse me iterate through um, each character and <laughs> return 
<laughs> return the concatenated value. I don't recommend that one, but you can try that. Um, anyways, I hope you guys find this educational. Please like and subscribe, because if you do, I'll give you a Sonic Golden Ring. See, when you learn about palindromes and you learn about how to interpret those alien circle languages like we mentioned here, I'll give you a golden ring to symbolize your full understanding of palindromes. It'll be just, um, you know, like and subscribe and it'll come in an Amazon package, right, bundled in bubble wrap, and you could just pop away and have fun with it. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, guys, well, have a good day, and um, I know this is like my third video on tutorials. I really appreciate you giving me some feedback how to be get be more clear by answers or some sort of suggested um, order how I do this thing and I know I want to become better at teaching people because I believe a person who could teach well can means that he understands his material much better um, and I want to be good in that stuff too because I want to be good at um, just teaching in general yeah all right I gotta work on this this um, teaching skill Anyways, guys, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day. See ya.